Hi everyone, today I am going to cover whether you need an interior design degree to call yourself or um, do the job of an interior designer. So, <laughs> um, in 99% of cases, you do not need um, an interior design degree, you don't need an architecture degree, you don't need a um, any qualification, in fact, to do the job role or to call yourself an interior designer. So that's 99% of cases. So that should give you a little sigh of relief. Um, it should also um, clarify uh, a lot of confusion um, amongst what's going on in the industry. Uh, what's really important, however, is to now listen to the 1% that does need an interior design degree and now make a decision based on um, the knowledge I'm about to present to you, whether uh, that is relevant to you, because actually the 1% where, where you do need it, it's, it's actually pretty serious. So you do uh, want to uh, just listen through to the rest of the uh, video. So um, when do you need a, an interior design degree to call yourself an interior designer or to undertake the job role of an interior designer? So there are two kind of laws really that are um, in place. One is called a practice act and the other is called a title act. Um, there's not many places around the world that actually uh, uh, have these laws in place. It's um, a very small number and uh, the title act, which all it does is prohibit you, prohibit you from using the word interior designer as explaining your job role or, um, and you would have to, I'll, I'll tell you how to research this, but um, on how to find the information that's relevant for you in your uh, in the area uh, or licensed interior designer in that order or registered interior designer in that order so kind of like configurations of those um, uh, titles for example uh, and just to clarify anything that uses the title architect is always protected <laughs> pretty much everywhere around the world so I would just use that as a baseline um, that most pretty much everywhere in the world the title of architect is actually protected. Um, I would just assume that is a written, but um, the title of interior designer uh, often isn't, um, but it might be in your state, territory or country. So what does that mean? It means that you cannot call yourself an interior designer, but you can call yourself something else. Um, or it, could, it could also relate to interior decorator actually. Um, but it means that you can't call yourself an interior designer, but you can still do the job of an interior designer. You just call it something else. So um, in most cases, uh, a title act can be uh, a little bit of nonsense and confusing because um, it doesn't really mean much, um, but it causes a lot of confusion between um, you know people in the industry, as you see because um, you probably couldn't find the right answer to this question. And um, also amongst the general public who don't know who they should be hiring and for what reason people need to have a license if they're, you know, for example, decorating a room for them. Um, so it causes a lot of confusion. Hopefully that clarifies whether um, uh, what an interior design title act is. So the one you really have to look out for is the interior design um, practice act and that is actually quite serious because it's a law that means that you cannot undertake the job role of an interior design at all so it means no space planning no drawing like you, you cannot do anything <laughs> well actually you research um, uh, the area and, um, and uh, what that practice act actually covers but um, in that case most title uh, most practice acts will come with a title act so um, it's it's only really relevant in about two or three places in the world. So it's not that prevalent at all. It's just um, when it is, it's it's actually you're breaking the law if you are um, calling yourself an interior designer as well as um, acting as an interior designer or undertaking the job role. So that's really, really quite serious. And you need to understand um, what the requirements are to get registered as an interior designer. And typically, um, it's the same or a similar process as um, becoming an architect. So um, where do you find this information? Well, it's a law, so it would be the local government, local territory, state or country, if it's relevant. So you would be calling up the architect's registration board or you would be calling the interior designer's registration board or the government to ask who is the 
who are the people who are regulating the act of interior designer or architect. In many cases, you might not um, have an interior design registration board because it goes directly to the architect's registration board or it's called the architect's and interior design registration board. Does that make sense? So how would you find that information? You would literally um, call up or research the uh, your local um, state government or um, country legislation um, or government body and just say, I want to get registered as an interior designer. Who, do, who can I speak to? What are the requirements? And that is the best way to find out the most accurate information for yourself in terms of what is required um, and what's protected. Because it varies from state to state in the US, um, from country to country around the world, and um, in some areas, like in Australia, from state to state, so um, or like territory to territory. So it can really be quite confusing as to what is relevant to you specifically. And I suppose searching the internet can be even more confusing because everyone's got their own opinions and um, uh, they're going to guide you to what's relevant to their location rather than um, what could be relevant to you depending on where you're searching in the world. Um, so let's just have a small kind of detour and let me clarify one other thing is in some areas domestic interior design, so any kind of residential work is typically not um, uh, seen as a threat. Or, or liability or um, any kind of danger to the general public. But working on commercial interiors might um, might pose a, a, a threat or some kind of danger to the general public. And in that case, um, there might be some kind of um, legislation relevant to commercial interior design, but not residential interior design. So I would also, if I'm researching in an area that um, either doesn't have any, well, actually in every case, I would research whether um, if I don't need an interior design degree, um, whether that is uh, something relevant, and if I, especially if I want to work in the commercial sector. Um, so one final thing I just wanted to clarify is the difference between an architect or an interior architect and an interior designer. And I think this is where the majority of all of this confusion comes from, because the profession of architecture is, um, it's, it's it's a very serious um, uh, profession which requires at least a minimum of a master's these days of education and at least two years postgraduate um, uh, experience plus um, registration as a passing a registration exam and continued development or professional development um, for your whole uh, career after um, graduation. A lot of these rules and regulations, um, laws, um, these practice and title acts have stemmed from um, protecting uh, the kind of boundary between architecture and interior design because there was no clear definition of what an architect did or an, an interior designer. And interior design was starting to creep into architecture. And um, that is where a lot of this um, confusion comes in because uh, people didn't know whether they should hire an architect or an interior designer and so they're kind of covering that kind of great overlap. If you want to do interior architecture, um, you basically have to be qualified as an architect. So you can't just do an interior architecture degree. You basically, in most cases, have to do an architecture degree and um, qualify as an architect. Um, so you, an interior desi design degree is never gonna qualify you to, um, in most cases, to become an interior architect. And that's really important to know. Um, if you do an interior architecture degree, you'll be an overqualified interior designer, but you, in most cases, you'll never become an architect unless you follow the path of an architect. So that's really important to clarify because the job roles of an architect and the job role of an interior designer um, are starting to become a little bit clearer. It can be still be a bit grey in those areas where there is legislation. But um, I think, you know, states like Florida, who have just um, deregulated interior design um, uh, from the uh, Title Act, it's uh, people are starting to clarify this message of what the difference is between architecture and interiors. And um, I think that's really useful for the general public and can start to help uh, people like you who are trying to become interior designers and just uh, getting really confused mixed messages about um, what how to, how to, what you need to do and uh, how to get into it. Um, so, um, just to clarify everything, in 99% of the world, you do not need a degree, you don't need any qualification, 
You don't need any kind of formal education to become an interior designer or to call yourself an interior designer. In some places where they have title acts um, uh, or practice acts, you will need to check your local government and ask the pretty much uh, typically the architects registration board whether uh, what it is that is required in order to become a licensed designer um, and whether the job role is protected because you might actually decide that you um, you don't care to call yourself an interior designer um, you can call yourself something else um, but you can still do the job role without a degree so um, that might be more relevant for you um, but in areas where there is a practice act in place, um, I would get this fact specifically from the government and make sure that you know uh, exactly what is required, the, the kind of degree that is required. So um, because I'm like 99.999% sure you will need a, at least um, a four or five year or six year degree to become registered as an architect um, uh, to uh, undertake the job role of a, a, an architect or um, at least a minimum uh, degree to um, undertake the job role of um, an interior designer or a highly skilled interior designer depending on um, uh, what the law is in that place for example. Um, and then just finally if you want to become an architect you need to follow the path of an architect even if you want to become an interior architect because obviously the title of architect is protected um, pretty much everywhere and because of that, um, and, and in many cases, the job role is also um, protected. So um, especially in those areas that sign off drawings like Europe and, and the States. So um, if you're signing off anything, I would assume that you would need to be um, uh, you know, a registered um, architect or designer. So hopefully that gives you not only the clarification that you needed to make the decision for yourself, um, but also the, um, um, the place to look for the right information if it does apply to you.